cauldron of roiling polyrhythms, mesmerizing experimental electronics, and cryptic lyrics, Talking Heads' 1980 album Remain in Light fused American punk with thrilling grooves. It also broke the arty New York City quartet into downtown dance clubs, the top of critics' lists, and onto MTV. Remain in Light documents one of rock's great balancing acts, merging the band's cerebral leanings, punk rock jitters, and rhythmic fascinations into a thrilling fusion that pulled them in multiple captivating directions at once. And that's not to mention the tension. Born Under Punches, The Heat Goes On, opens the album with Talking Heads' newfound rhythmic prowess front and center. (laughs) After the tumultuous tours that followed 1979's Fear of Music, the band's husband-wife rhythm section of drummer Chris France and bassist Tina Weymouth had to camp to the Bahamas, uncertain if they would even stay in the group. When frontman David Byrne and keyboardist-guitarist Jerry Harrison joined them, the group jammed communally, utilizing Fear of Music's propulsive e-zimbra as a launching pad. Though Brian Eno had produced the previous two Talking Heads albums, he hadn't planned on working with the band a third time. But upon hearing their newest demos, he signed on, thickening the rhythms with an array of loops and layers. Cross-Eyed and Painless, especially, shows the group's clear debt to African-American pop music of all types. Before work began on Remain in Light, France had provided the backbeat on Curtis Blow's early hip-hop hit, The Breaks, and the rapper's percussive delivery was subsequently taken up by Byrne on Cross-Eyed and Painless's vocal breakdown. Houses in Motion, meanwhile, pledges allegiance to Nigerian Afrobeat pioneer Fela Kuti, long a touchstone for Eno. The song courses with a phantasmal horn part, arranged by avant-garde trumpeter-composer John Hassel, originally slated to collaborate on what would become Byrne and Eno's influential collage of global sounds and tape loops, My Life in the Bush of Ghosts, released after Remain in Light but recorded before. Though Byrne and Eno would play up the influence of African music on Remain in Light, the France Weymouth rhythm section would counter that the album drew more heavily from funk, R&B, and early hip-hop. Leading off side two, Once in a Lifetime remains arguably the band's most ubiquitous song and the album's centerpiece. Though at the time of its release, Remain in Light was the worst-selling Talking Heads LP, and the single didn't even break the Billboard Top 100. Perhaps no longer appealing to rock fans with its unfurling polyrhythms, the two-bar pulse of Once in a Lifetime instead received plenty of play at New York City's club mecca, the Paradise Garage. Put into heavy rotation by the club's resident DJ, Larry LeVan, it broke the band to a wider African-American audience, including R&B radio. It would take another year for the song's quirky music video, featuring a bespectacled burn iconically twitching his way through an existential crisis, to launch them into mainstream America. Talking Heads' willingness to think hard and take risks continues to reverberate through generations of newer bands. From Radiohead, who took their name from a 1986 Talking Heads song, the Vampire Weekend, from Fish, who covered Remain in Light in its entirety, to St. Vincent, who would go on to collaborate with Byrne. The group expanded its parameters, embracing global rhythms and fusing them to rock without losing the energy of either. Decades after its release, Remain in Light continues to illuminate and pulse. <laughs> 